Hey guys and girls, welcome to our interactive read it loud for today. Um, we're going to start mixing in our social studies and our science in with our interactive read aloud. And last week we read all about Miss Nelson is missing and we learned about the importance of rules and laws. Well, this week we're gonna continue learning about rules and laws, but now we're gonna um, take a turn and start looking at the government. In second grade, we start learning about um, all of the different um, wings of the government. So we're gonna start with the president, then we're gonna look at the governor, then we're gonna look at the mayor and we're gonna see how they are leaders of different parts of our government. We're gonna look about look at where they work and what some of their job duties are, okay? Um, so I'm gonna start with our learning target. It says, I can identify the president as the leader of our nation and where he works. So in second grade, your job is to understand that the president is the leader of our nation, that's the United States of America, and we're also gonna be able to identify where he works on a map and know it when we see it, okay? Our current president is Donald Trump, okay? He is our current president. I'm just gonna go over a few fun facts that you may not know or you may already know about the president. One of his jobs is to meet with other leaders around the world. He lives in the White House in Washington, D.C. And I wanna show you a picture Here's the White House. You may have seen this before. All of the presidents live here when they're voted in, when they're elected in. Another fun fact about the president is that it's his job to um, come up with new ideas for laws. He's always guarded by the Secret Service at all times. He decides and plans how to spend um, the nation's money. He is in charge of making sure that all laws are obeyed. He is also the commander in chief of the armed forces like the army, the military, the navy, the coast guard. Um, when he has to travel to faraway places, he flies on a jet called Air Force One. So those are just some few facts that I wanted to share with you about the president. But before we learn more about the president and his job duties, we're going to start reading um, a book. Now this is not about the president of the United States. This, is, this story is about a class president. Now a class president is much like the president of the United States, except he's not the president, he's not the leader of um, the entire nation. A class president is the leader of the class, okay? And just like a real president, to be, in order to be the class president, you have to be voted in. Um, you have to be elected. You have to win the most votes, okay? So we're going to read together. You know, this is a chapter book, so it's going to take us a few days to get through it. But this um, story is called Marvin Redpost, Class President. Now, who do you guys think this little redhead is right here? Maybe it's Marvin? And look, he's shaking someone's hand. Look who the... He's wearing some kind of badge with a flag on it. I wonder who that could be. That might be that might could be a president or that might could be somebody in the army. We'll have to read to find out. This book is written by Lois Satcher, okay? So, um, as we're only going to read two chapters of this book today, but as we read it or as I read it, I want you to listen out for one of our special words today. Our special word today is the word expression. Say that word with me, please expression and you see how there's a little emoji here with a little speech bubble well it's trying to give you a hint about what an expression is an expression is a way of speaking or singing to show your feelings when you give expression or when you tell an expression that is a way of speaking or singing to show your emotions to show how you feel okay so i want you to as i read um, the first two chapters of uh, marvin red post i want you to pay attention to this word expression let's see if we can find it in the story and let's see if we can use the context clues to try to figure out what it's talking about okay expression okay so we're going to get started and like i said i'm only going to read you the first two chapters Marvin Redpost, Class President by Lois Satcher, illustrated by Adam Record. Now remember, here's the title of the story. Here's the author. The author is the person who wrote the story. And you've got the illustrator. Now, um, chapter books usually do not have a lot of illustrations in them, but sometimes they do. And this one does have some illustrations. Those are the drawings or the pictures. And Adam Record um, is the illustrator of those um, pictures. Um, the publisher is down here at the bottom, the Random House New York. That is the company that put the author's story and the illustrator's pictures all together to make it into a book so that we can purchase it. 
So you've got your author, illustrator, and your publisher at the bottom. Okay, chapter one. There was a red post out in front of Marvin Redpost's house. The rest of the fence was white. Marvin tapped the post for luck as he walked through the gate on his way to school. He wore a pair of blue jeans with a hole over each knee. It was whole day at school. Every day had been special this week. Monday, he had to wear socks that didn't match. Tuesday, everyone wore t-shirts that came from a vacation. Wednesday, yesterday, had been hat day, and today, everyone had to wear clothes with holes. His two best friends, Nick and Stuart, were waiting for him at the corner. Do you think Miss North will wear clothes with holes? asked Stuart. Sure, why not? asked Mar Marvin. No way, said Nick. I'll bet you a million dollars. Nick had also said there was no way Miss North would wear mismatched socks. He had also said there was no way she would let the kids wear hats in class. So far, he owed Marvin two million dollars. Nick was wearing a t-shirt that had a large hole under his right armpit. It had been torn in a fight. She probably doesn't even own any clothes with holes, Nick said. How could a teacher get holes in her clothes? Moths, said Marvin. She might have a wool sweater. Moths eat wool. Actually, moths don't really eat wool, Stuart pointed out. Everybody thinks that, but really it's the caterpillars that eat the wool. Now here's the picture right here. Now you can see Marvin, he's got his holes in his knees. And then who do you think these two guys are right here? Who, what were his friends' names? We've got Stuart and we've got Nick. Now this little boy right here has a hole in his right armpit. Now who was that? Do you remember who, who that was? Let's go back and look. It says Nick was wearing a t-shirt that had a large hole under his right armpit. So we've got Marvin, Nick has the hole in his armpit, and so, who, might, who is this? This must be Stuart, okay? And they're making a bet that when they get to school, their teacher will not have any clothes on with holes because they think teachers don't own clothes with holes in it. Stuart was wearing a t-shirt that also had a large hole under the right armpit. It had also been torn in a fight. Nick and Stuart had fought each other, but now they were friends. You wanna come over after school today? Nick asked. Okay, said Stuart. I can't, said Marvin. My mom is taking me to the, to the shoe store. I'm going to my cousin's bar mitzvah on Saturday. When they got to school, everybody they saw had holes in their clothes. Travis wore a shirt that was more holy, that was more holes than it was shirt. Clarence had a hole in his sneaker and his sock, so his big toe stuck all the way through. You should clip your toenail, said Marvin. You should clip your mouth, said Clarence. That didn't really make any sense, but Marvin got the point. Clarence was the toughest kid in his class. The bell rang and everybody lined up and went inside. Mrs. North was waiting in the classroom. She had a large hole in her shirt over her stomach. Marvin stopped and stared. He could see Miss North's belly button. Nick now owed him $3 million. So that's the end of chapter one. And so Nick just lost another bet. Miss, their teacher, Miss um, North, was actually wearing clothes with holes in them when they got there. So they thought that was pretty funny. All right, now we're still listening for the word expression, okay? Listen for this word. We're on chapter two. Casey Hapleton usually sat at the desk next to Marvin. She was absent today. Marvin was disappointed to see her desk empty. She was a funny girl and he knew she would have liked whole day. I must say, said Miss North, you are all so well dressed today. I've never seen a better looking group of third graders. Everybody laughed. How'd you get a hole in your shirt? Kenny asked. I was working in my garden, said Miss North. My shirt got snagged on a thorn from a rose bush. Marvin nodded. He should have guessed. We should dress this way all the time, said Judy Jasper. That way, nobody would feel bad if their parents were too poor to buy them any new clothes. That's a good idea, said Miss North. Marvin thought so, too. And the holes keep you cool on a hot day, Stuart pointed out. You're right, said Miss North. Marvin agreed. Holes made perfect sense. He wondered why nobody had thought of it before. A child's voice came over the PA system. That's the loud intercom system that we have in our schools. 
Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. Every day, a different kid got to lead the school in the pledge. That's Casey, said Judy Jasper. Marvin recognized Casey's voice as she recited the pledge. She sounded very serious. He put his hand over his heart and said it along with her. When Casey came back to class, she told Miss North that Mr. McCabe wanted to see her. Mr. McCabe was the principal. Did he say why? Miss North asked. Casey shook her head. Casey wore a shirt that was way too big for her. Marvin guessed it was probably her father's. Not only did it have holes in it, but it also had paint spilled all over it. Mrs. North told the class she would be gone for only a minute. She said she expected everyone to behave and to use their time wisely. After she left, Nick said, I bet you Miss North got in trouble for wearing torn up clothes. No, Mr. McCabe is also wearing torn up clothes, said Casey. I saw his elbow. What did it look like? asked Judy. It was pink and bumpy, said Casey. Casey had a ponytail that stuck out of the side of her head instead of the back. She sat down next to Marvin. The ponytail was on Marvin's side. Sometimes when Casey laughed really hard, her ponytail went around in circles. Mrs. North was gone for a lot longer than a minute. When she returned, she had a very strange expression on her face. A what? Expression. Say it one more time. Expression. I'm going to read that sentence one more time. When she returned, she had a very strange expression on her face. Now, let's read the next um, few sentences to see if we can figure out what, she, what they're talking about. She looked lost. She opened her mouth but didn't say anything. Are you all right? asked Kenny. Miss North looked at Kenny but still didn't say anything. Finally, she spoke. She said, we are... Then she stopped. Now, let's go back here. Now, we said in the beginning that an expression is a way of speaking or singing to show feeling, okay? So, now, in the book, it says, when Mrs. Um, North got back from the principal's office, she had a very strange expression on her face. She doesn't say anything, but she's got a look on her face, an expression. She's get, showing the way she feels just by the look on her face. It says she looked lost. Show me your best, if you're lost, like if you're totally confused and you're not sure like where to go or what to do or maybe not even what's going on, what kind of, what would a lost face look like? Maybe like this? It says she opened her mouth, but she didn't say anything. So no words are coming out of her mouth. She's not crying. She's not laughing. She's just standing there looking lost. She's got this weird, strange expression on her face that she looks lost and confused. She finally opened her mouth and she said, we are, and then stopped. So why, what do you think happened in the principal's office that might make the teacher come back to the room and be confused or lost? She, she's not speaking, she doesn't have any words to say. Um, her expression is lost and confused. Do you think it was something good that happened in the principal's office? Probably not, okay? Um, if I came back to my room looking lost and confused, to me, that would maybe be like bad news or it could be like shocking news. Like, oh my goodness, I don't even know what to think. I don't even want to, I don't even know what to do next. It might, she could be shocked or maybe she's sad. Maybe she's confused. Let's get reading to find out what's making her have that lost expression on her face. She started to talk again. There will, but that was as far as she got. She tried again. I expect but she shut her mouth tight again. She tapped her desk with her fist. At last, she managed to say a complete sentence. We are going to have a visitor today. Marvin couldn't wait to hear who it was. From the way Mrs. North was acting, he thought it must be somebody weird. Who is it? asked Warren. Is it somebody I've heard of? asked Nick. Oh, I hope so, said Nick. I hope so, Nick, said Miss North. Then she took a deep breath and she said, the president will be coming here. Everyone gasped. Show me your best gasp. <gasps> if the president was coming to our school, we would probably be shocked, okay? We would probably be lost and we would probably not know what to do next if he was coming to our school. And that's how they're feeling right now. Marvin was a little confused now. 
He wasn't sure which president Miss North meant. Did she mean the president of the United States? Or did she mean like the president of something else, like the president of the shoe company? Marvin's school was in Maryland. It was less than 20 miles from Washington, D.C. And remember, we talked about the president lives in Washington, D.C. in the, what is this? In the White House, that's right. So Marvin's school is only about 20 minutes away, 20 miles away from where the president lives and works. His father, Marvin's father, also worked in Washington, D.C. So it's possible that Miss North did really mean the president of the United States. But why would the president of the United States be coming to his school? He raised his hand. Patsy Gatsby raised her hand, too. Yes, Patsy, said Miss North. The president of what? Patsy asked. Miss North stared at her as if she thought Patsy was an alien from another planet. The President of the United States, she said. Duh, said Travis, and Patsy blushed. Sometimes I wonder about you, Patsy, said Miss North. What do you think, the President of Mexico, asked Clarence. Marvin turned red too, but nobody noticed, and so he lowered his hand. Yes, Marvin, did you have a question? asked Miss North. He shook his head. No, I was just stretching. He was telling a story one day. He was going to ask, was it the President of the United States? And then they all laughed at Patsy, so he put his hand down. Miss North explained that even Mr. McCabe hadn't known the President was coming until 10 minutes ago. It had been kept secret for security reasons. Remember we said that um, the President was always um, being guarded by... Um, the Secret Service agents, those are the people that protect him wherever they go. Um, and, like, and they probably do keep a lot of secrets because they don't want everybody to know where he's going to be. Now I know I don't have to tell you to be, now I know I don't have to tell you to behave when the president gets here, she said. Then she, to then she told everybody how to behave. So here you go. You've got Miss North over here telling the class, and look, she's got a hole in her belly for whole day. Don't forget it's whole day. <laughs> what do y'all think the president's going to think about that when he shows up? And you've got Marvin, and I'm wondering if that might be Patsy right there. We'll see. Be respectful. Be attentive. That means pay attention. If you get a chance to speak to him, remember to speak loud and clear. You should call him Mr. President. Yes, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. President. Remember to. And then Miss North suddenly stopped talking. Oh, my gosh, she exclaimed. I have to change my clothes. Okay, so that ends chapter two. Um, so I want you to think about this word expression. And remember, I'm going to read you. I'm going to tell you what it means one more time. A way of speaking or singing to show feeling. Now, in our story so far, Miss North had a lost expression on her on her face. She was not speaking or singing. She had a lost, confused look on her face. And she wasn't sad or mad. She was shocked. She was shocked that the President of the United States was coming to visit their classroom and they were all wearing holes in their clothes, okay? So she's a little bit um, shocked right now. That's the, She had a shocked expression on her face, okay? All right, guys. Well, that is uh, Marvin Redpost, Class President, Chapters 1 and 2. We'll check back in tomorrow for Chapters 3 and 4 and we'll learn some more special words and learn some more facts about our President. All right, guys. Have a great day.